Antioxidants do what it sounds like they do. They counteract oxidation. And many of these special chemicals are well known to us. For example, vitamins C and E. The role these compounds perform is vital, especially since oxidative stress may play a causal role in numerous health conditions, including Alzheimer's disease. But what is oxidation and oxidative stress? Picture a metal chain that is left outside. After a while, it gets all rusty. Well, a similar thing happens inside our bodies as we age. We don't rust, of course, but one illustration of oxidation that happens to us is the effect that getting older has on our skin. And that's an effect we can easily see. But this type of damage isn't confined to our exteriors. Our internal organs, including the brain, are affected as well. Consider this emphatic statement from one author writing in the Journal of Food Science and Technology. It is certain that free radical-induced damage during oxidative stress gives rise to many chronic health problems, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases, as well as cardiovascular and inflammatory diseases. And just to give you a quick preview of what's coming, plants, including herbs and spices, as we will see, are being enlisted to fight these menacing conditions, including Alzheimer's. One obvious example of this is the case of the pharmaceutical intervention, galantamine, sold as Razodine and Reminil. Galantamine was developed from the common snowdrop, Galanthus, Nivalis. We need to be careful though. First of all, because not all antioxidants are equal. Some antioxidants, especially synthetics, can have negative effects. And secondly, you can have too much of a good thing. Even certain natural antioxidants, like beta carotene and vitamin E, may be toxic in doses that are too high. Thirdly, you should be aware that antioxidant supplements, like the kind that you might buy in the form of a capsule, have yet to be proven absolutely effective at reducing health risks or treating diseases. Additionally, many of them are not standardized or well-regulated. But more research is called for, and many have hope that natural compounds will provide a fruitful area of investigation. If there's one thing that may be said, it's that, quote, concerns have not been raised about the safety of antioxidants in food. And of course, fruits and vegetables are acknowledged sources of helpful antioxidants. And this is one of the reasons why brain-friendly diets, like the MIND diet, usually center their recommendations around plant-based foods. Natural antioxidants include berries, green leafy vegetables like broccoli, spinach, and kale. A full list is available on alzheimersproof.com. But recommendations have also noted that many herbs and spices are packed with antioxidants. In part one, I listed 16 examples that are often, but not always, found in basic sets of kitchen spices. I invite you to consult that video for details, but just for review purposes, let me run through those 16 right now. The herbs I covered were basil, also called sweet basil, bay leaves, or bay laurel, black pepper, cayenne pepper, and the related paprika, cinnamon, coriander seeds, cumin, garlic, ginger, mustard, nutmeg, oregano, rosemary, sage, thyme, and turmeric. You can think of those basic 16 as your starter set, and I mean that from a culinary standpoint as well as from the standpoint of antioxidants. In this video, I want to expand that basic set of 16 and offer you a further 16 examples of antioxidant herbs and spices. But if you're counting, you're probably going to end up with a few more than 16. While these 16 may not be as common as the ones that I explored in the first video, many of them are readily available. I'm once again going to go in alphabetical order. So entrant number one is allspice, pimenta dioica, also known as Jamaican pepper, known for its antioxidant activities and containing a range of them, including cineol, eugenol, pinene, and many others. Taken together, they are potent. Allspice is powerful enough to be investigated for possible anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and other effects on top of its antioxidant aspects. Here is its overall antioxidant profile. The antioxidant capabilities of each of these plants tends to transcend the antioxidant capabilities of each constituent chemical. So each of the chemicals listed is an antioxidant in and of itself, but allspice's capability as an antioxidant tends to go beyond the capability of any of its constituent chemicals and even to go beyond the capabilities of all the chemicals put together. This ability of these chemicals to amplify one another when they're all together is called synergy. 
A second entrant on our list today is Anise, which actually comes in two variations. Number one, we have what is simply referred to as Anise, Pimpinella anisum. And number two, there's the version called Star Anise, or Elysium Verum. Both are actually antioxidants. Just a few words of caution on Anise. It is reputed to have estrogen-like effects, which could be a negative for people who are dealing with hormone-associated conditions, or indeed, for males. Additionally, Anise contains some meristicin, which we discussed in conjunction with nutmeg in Antioxidants Part 1. The trouble you may recall is that meristicin can be toxic in high enough amounts. If the dose is large enough, Meristocin may result in some nasty effects such as nausea and muscle spasms, so use with care. Still, the antioxidant profile is impressive. It may yet deserve a place on your spice rack, even if for moderate use. Star anise, on the other hand, shows quite a bit more promise. It is reputed to function as an antimicrobial compound in addition to its antioxidant potential, which is considerable. It's worth mentioning that star anise is a worthy substitute for regular anise, even if its flavor is a bit lighter. Star anise packs plenty of antioxidant punch. By the way, I'll try to have these antioxidant profiles posted to the website soon. Star anise is also being investigated for its anticholinesterase activity, which is, of course, one of the treatment trajectories of many Alzheimer's drugs. Number three is caraway, the seed of which is the most pertinent. Carum carvi. It's a rich source of antioxidants, according to Healthline. Its impressive antioxidant roster includes camphorol as well as quercetin, which is often bundled with vitamin C in commercial supplement preparations. Caraway is interesting from an Alzheimer's perspective since it has the potential to hit many therapeutic targets. Number one, it is reported to have some anticholinesterase activity, making it a potential acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. It is also reportedly effective at reducing amyloid plaques. Number four is cardamom, which, like an ease, has several subtypes, including black cardamom, amomum subulatum. But there's also green cardamom, called Hari Alachi in India, with the scientific name Elitaria cardamomum, sometimes referred to as true cardamom. Cardamom is packed with antioxidants and may have numerous health benefits regardless of whether we're talking about the so-called true cardamom or a false variety. For example, according to the results of one study, cardamom had anti-diabetic potential in addition to its antioxidant capabilities, which may be substantial. And this can be surmised from a list of the constituents in both green cardamom and black cardamom. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that cardamom is also being investigated for its potential neuroprotective effects. And it too holds promise as a possible inhibitor of acetylcholinesterase that is in addition to its ability to reduce oxidative stress. Next up, cilantro, coriandrum sativum. Both leaves and seeds from this plant contain antioxidants. When we discussed seeds as we did in part one, see that video for details, it's traditional to use the word coriander. Whereas when we're speaking about the leaves, as we will be in a moment, the preferred term is cilantro. You do occasionally see phrases like coriander leaf used instead. Regardless of what name is applied, it's an antioxidant powerhouse. And it's even been singled out as possibly useful for guarding yourself against Alzheimer's disease. Of course, as mentioned in the introduction, one of the reasons for this is the possibility that Alzheimer's disease is, in whole or in part, the result of chronic oxidation or oxidative stress. Since cilantro has remarkable antioxidant potential, you might consider adding it to your herbal repertoire. You can expect to receive generous quantities of carotenoids, including beta-carotene, as well as a host of other constituents, some of which, like caffeic acid, we've encountered before. When beta-carotene and other vitamins are delivered in plant form, they're often quite a bit safer than they would be if you were supplementing in a capsule. Do not construe this as medical or nutritional advice. I want to point out that my lists of antioxidant constituents are not exhaustive, but they have been cobbled together from various academic journal articles, which you should feel free to consult directly if you're interested in learning more about any of these plants. These scholarly publications often contain more expansive and technically precise enumerations of a plant's chemical constituents, and they sometimes provide detailed estimates for quantities of each component, which of course can vary even among plants of the same genus and species. Next, let's take a look at cloves, Syzygium aromaticum. I was sorely tempted to include cloves in the previous list of 16 spices because they are so often cited as herbal antioxidants. Cloves have been touted as the best natural antioxidant, at least insofar as herbs are concerned. One of the most noteworthy constituents is a chemical called 
eugenol. Eugenol is found in other herbs, for example, basil, cinnamon, and turmeric, all covered last time, as well as allspice, anise, and star anise, just mentioned. But eugenol, along with other powerful phenols, is arguably found more abundantly in clothes than anywhere else. Eugenol isn't the only active antioxidant in clothes. Together, its components combine and amplify one another synergistically to make, quote, the antioxidant and antimicrobial activity of cloves higher even than many fruits, vegetables, and other spices. Take a look at various scientific articles if you're hungry for more on cloves. Number seven, dill, anathem graviolens. Dill's antioxidant capabilities are impressive. Firstly, it's a significant source of vitamin C, similar to thyme, which we covered previously. Vitamin C is itself known as a powerful water-soluble antioxidant. And I wanna add that with one exception, Every herb on this list of 16 has some non-negligible vitamin C component. Vitamin C content ranges from very large amounts in cilantro and thyme, with dill falling somewhere in the middle of the list, and spices like mint and fenugreek pulling up the rear. The only exception is sesame seeds, which we'll get into later, but sesame seeds are an excellent source of zinc, selenium, copper, iron, vitamin B6, and vitamin E. Drying herbs often will reduce certain vitamin levels, especially vitamin C. On the other hand, it's arguable that the dried variety has far higher levels of other antioxidant components when compared to fresh herbs. You have to weigh fresh versus dried. Kind of depends on what you're going after. If you're going after vitamin content, you might prefer fresh. If you're going after the antioxidant capabilities of some of the other chemicals, dried might be the way to go. Besides vitamin C, dill is also loaded with additional antioxidant chemicals, including limonene, pinene, and quercetin. See, for instance, this Natural Product Research Journal article if you want more on dill. Always bear in mind that different extracts of these herbs may have different potencies. Before we leave dill, though, I'd like to mention that one of the active antioxidant constituents of dill alpha philandrine is reputed to be a cholinesterase inhibitor. I touched on this previously, as alpha philandrine is also a constituent of Boswellia serrata, also known as Indian frankincense, and you can see my video on Ayurvedic herbs for more information. Dill, alongside caraway and cumin, is sometimes also a possible culinary substitute for the next herb on my list, number eight, fennel, Funiculum vulgari. Numerous antioxidants can be found in fennel, including both vitamin C and quercetin, but also carvacrol, pinene, and thymol, which latter compound, of course, is a major constituent of thyme. Number nine, fenugreek, the scientific name for which Trigonella fenum graecum means Greek hay. Even though fenugreek appears to be unrelated to so-called hay fever, it can cause allergic reactions in peanut-sensitive individuals. I should add a word of caution at this point. Some of the herbs found on these lists may elicit allergic reactions in certain sensitive people. From some of the information I was able to find, mustard appears to be a common allergen, but also anise, coriander, cumin, fennel, and parsley are potential offenders. Any of the compounds might possibly elicit allergic responses in certain people. One common reaction is called oral allergy syndrome. Consult your medical provider or trusted expert for more information. But for those who can tolerate fenugreek, it's another excellent antioxidant herb, especially the seeds, which can actually be made into a powerful oil. Interestingly, one of fenugreek's most active chemical components is cinnamic acid, which is a major constituent of cinnamon, which we covered last time. And like cinnamon, fenugreek has been shown to lower blood sugar levels and may be useful for diabetics. Once again, consult your physician. Number 10, horseradish, Armoratia rusticana. Horseradish is widely known and like mustard touched on in part one, may be considered either a spice or a condiment. Just bear in mind that some commercial preparations may contain numerous additional ingredients such as sucrose, fructose, or eggs. Horseradish has a rather unique antioxidant profile and includes such compounds as asparagine and cinegrin. Additionally, it is reported to be high in vitamin C content. It may be recommended for respiratory tract as well as urinary tract infections. Number 11, marjoram, oregonum majorana. Marjoram is a close cousin of oregano, also covered in part one. And like oregano, marjoram is reputed to have robust antioxidant potential. Just take a peek at a list of its extensive antioxidant constituents, including cinnamon 
pineal, limonene, pinene, quercetin, and thymol. It has an article devoted to it, and it's being investigated for its possible memory-enhancing effects, as well as its ability to positively affect amyloid beta proteins in Alzheimer's sufferers. Number 12, I want to look at two notable members of the mint family. Peppermint, mentha piperita, and spearmint, often just designated simply mint, mentha spicata. Both peppermint and spearmint contain vitamin content, for example, vitamin A or retinol, and of course, both have antioxidant components, like cineol, limonene, and pinene in the case of peppermint, but also in the case of spearmint, borneol. I discussed borneol in part one, and there I stated that borneol reportedly helps shuttle various Alzheimer's treating drugs, like huperzine A, into the brain more efficiently. Various scholarly articles explore the chemical properties and members of the mint family, and fuller lists of antioxidant constituents are available for both peppermint and spearmint. Additionally, various mentha plants hit multiple therapeutic targets in various research. For example, mentha plants may have a beneficial effect on the central nervous system. They may possibly be relevant to modulating acetylcholine levels. They might help to inhibit beta amyloid accumulation. They may also interfere with the pathological accumulation of tau protein. Mentha plants might possibly protect cells from apoptotic damage, that is, cell death. And finally, mentha has been associated with improved learning and cognition in both mice and Alzheimer's disease patients. Number 13 is parsley, also referred to as garden parsley. Petrocillinum crispum. It's perhaps most familiar to people as a garnish, but it would be a shame if its decorative capabilities overshadowed the fact that it is also an antioxidant storehouse. First of all, it's rich in vitamin C or ascorbic acid, but it's also packed with various flavonoids, as well as many other antioxidant components. Some of its most notable constituents are caffeic acid and quercetin. However, the epigenin in parsley also could represent, quote, a novel tool to delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease or slow down its progression. This component of parsley has been shown to possibly be relevant to numerous therapeutic targets for Alzheimer's disease. We see it may possibly inhibit amyloid accumulation. It could improve memory and learning deficits. It might restore certain negatively affected neural pathways. It has neurovascular protective effects. It may also reduce neuronal apoptosis. And finally, it may reduce neural inflammation and stress. Parsley is not only an antioxidant, but its antioxidant effects often show up by reducing oxidative stress in the brain. Next, we'll take a quick look at the herb saffron, which I placed number four on my list of top five Alzheimer's herbs. Saffron is cultivated in Iran as well as in Spain. Either way, it's termed crocus sativus in the scientific nomenclature, and it's another antioxidant powerhouse, containing some now familiar names like caffeic acid and flavonoids, but also possessing the crocins that are a hallmark of saffron. In one Journal of Agricultural Food Chemicals article, we read that crocin, also abundant in the gardenia, has antioxidant activity on a par with the industrial chemical BHA. BHA, or butylated hydroxyanisole, is a powerful synthetic antioxidant. The trouble with BHA and its sister chemical BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, is that both have been shown to be possibly cytotoxic, that is, cell killing a property that, while it may be advantageous for applications such as chemotherapy for cancer patients, is arguably not something that you want to have associated with personal care products like deodorant and lotion or food items like cereals or meats. Now, this makes saffron very attractive as a possibly safe and effective manufacturing and processing additive. But I would be remiss if I didn't also point out that saffron is being investigated for possible use in anti-obesity applications. Obesity is currently considered an Alzheimer's disease risk factor. But more importantly for this channel, saffron has been favorably compared to two pharmaceuticals that are most commonly prescribed for mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. Specifically, in several double-blind scientific studies, saffron was shown to be as effective in improving cognitive symptoms in Alzheimer's patients as the drugs denepazil and memantine. And to top it off, saffron was safer than the former. And I got into some of this when I discussed saffron previously. Now, this all makes saffron a tough act to follow, but we're not quite done yet. Number 15 is sesame seeds. Sesamum indicum. I probably don't need to say it, but sesame seeds are chock full of antioxidants. They are also being investigated as possible cancer fighters and are said to possess anti-aging, anti-diabetic, and anti-inflammatory properties, in addition to their antioxidant potential. The journal Molecules goes so far as to say that sesame seed 
have as good a claim as any food to, quote, potentially be considered as medicine. Among its major constituents are fatty acids, such as oleic and linoleic acids, which reportedly have antibacterial properties. One of sesame's strongest antioxidants is a chemical called sesamol, which is particularly prevalent in the roasted oil and may have preservative and other commercial applications. Moreover, the related sesamin and sesamolin are, among other things, regarded for various neuroprotective properties. Taking a look at sesame's singular antioxidant profile, we also notice that the seeds contain tocopherols. Tocopherol is the scientific name for vitamin E. The main form in sesame seeds is something called gamma tocopherol. Now, this is common in seeds, and it's slightly distinct from alpha tocopherol, the form usually found in off-the-shelf vitamin E capsules. Tocopherols are arguably sesame's main antioxidant agents. And if you thought saffron's possible relevance to Alzheimer's disease treatment was amazing, well, look what else is right in the thick of things. Vitamin E has acetylcholinesterase inhibiting and regulating abilities. Acetylcholinesterase inhibition is the primary action of Alzheimer's disease drugs like denepazil, sold under the brand name Aricept. Would you believe that vitamin E was not far behind the pharmaceutical grade denepazil? So you may want to consider dishes that allow you to incorporate sesame seeds into your diet. Last but not least, number 16, tarragon. Also sometimes called dragon's wort, although occasionally you see other names such as estragon. Regardless, the scientific name is Artemisia dracunculus. Not only does tarragon belong to the list of herbal antioxidants, according to some sources, it may be close to the top. One reason I wanted to include tarragon on my list was because its antioxidant profile includes no fewer than three components currently being investigated as acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, cineol, estragol, and the previously discussed philandrine. And you can read more about those online. But secondly, according to one oxidative medicine and cellular longevity article, tarragon may yet prove relevant to the treatment of another of Alzheimer's symptoms or comorbidities, namely depression. Some researchers see antidepressant potential in tarragon. Thirdly, though, one other and less fortunate feature of tarragon helps me to segue into the final chapter of this investigation. Namely, tarragon is arguably somewhat difficult to obtain. Granted, I have framed this discussion in terms of herbs that are a little less available than the ones that I covered in the first installment. Even so, the availability of the spices I'm covering here does tend to vary, and some of the spices, like tarragon, may be less available and less easily obtainable for people in certain areas. So allow me to conclude this presentation by saying a word or two about substitutions. Even though culinary uses are arguably secondary to the medicinal uses that I've been focusing upon, for this part I am going to rely on substitution advice that pertains to cooking. This is mainly because I am assuming most people watching this video are going to be thinking, how can I incorporate these herbs and spices into the dishes that I prepare? But it's worth pointing out that if you opt to go the supplement route instead, and try to obtain these herbs in capsule form, then some of the substitution advice may not apply to you. My hope in running through these substitutions is that you're gonna find that you don't need every herb on the list in order to have a versatile stockpile. I'm just gonna fire these off. Some will be substitutions within the same list. So for instance, cilantro can stand in for parsley. Don't make the mistake of using it only as a garnish, for it is chock full of antioxidants. Other substitutions will be something from the previous list of more common herbs standing in for one of the less common herbs covered here. For example, cinnamon can replace allspice. Anise can stand in for fennel, and since both anise and fennel belong to the same family, fennel can also stand in for anise, as well as the related star anise. Fennel can stand in for dill, and in fact, if you don't have fennel, caraway, cumin, or dill can stand in for fennel. Allspice or cloves can stand in for star anise. Ginger or mustard can actually replace horseradish. Nutmeg is a good substitute for cloves, as well as allspice being a substitute for cloves. Additionally, cinnamon can stand in for cloves. And then we see the intersubstitutability, since allspice can also stand in for nutmeg. Oregano can stand in for the less common marjoram. Basil or fennel can stand in for tarragon, and tarragon can stand in for dill. I'm just skipping around and hitting some highlights, but if you want more, you can find numerous substitution lists online, including this one that I located on Dartmouth University's website. So where can you go for more information? Well, firstly, 
There are numerous journals, including the Journal of Medicinal Food. There's a helpful article titled Antioxidant Capacity of 26 Spice Extracts and Characterization of Their Phenolic Constituents in Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry. And remember, as pointed out last time, there is an entire journal called Antioxidants devoted to these discussions. But for a more bird's eye view with less technical language, I invite you to consult my own video library, including the top 10 Ayurvedic brain herbs, 10 more brain health herbs, my top five list in the best herb for Alzheimer's and other dementias, as well as a dedicated video on rosemary that I did. And of course, the precursor to this video, Antioxidants on Your Kitchen Spice Rack, part one. I hope you enjoyed this exploration as much as I did. If you found something of use in the video, I do ask that you like it, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be alerted to new content as it becomes available. I thank you so much for being with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Thank you so much.